This video cast will explain the properties of water. Nonpolar, polar, what does it all mean? Are we talking about polar bears? No, not polar bears. How about the Arctic, the Antarctic? No, not those either, and not even Santa Claus. Nonpolar molecules have covalent bonds, and within the nonpolar molecule, these electrons are shared equally, and so as a result, there are no charges on this molecule. The molecule is neutral. And it's because the atoms within the molecule are of similar sizes. Here's some examples of nonpolar molecules. Gases such as hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon dioxide. Liquids such as oils and gasolines. That's vegetable oil and motor oil. And even fats. Now if you notice the carbon dioxide molecule in the lower portion of this screen, you can see that the nuclei of the carbon atom has six protons, and those of the oxygen atom have eight. Those nuclei are very similar in size, and as a result, there's a strong sharing of electrons between them, forming, forming very strong covalent bonds. This molecule is nonpolar because the electrons are shared equally amongst all three atoms. P -p 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 Polar molecules have covalent bonds also, but the electrons are not shared equally, and that's because the atoms within the molecule are of different and unequal sizes. So here's an example. The water molecule shown here has one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms. The oxygen atom has eight protons in its nucleus, and it's much, much bigger than the hydrogen atoms, which only have one proton in the nucleus. As a result, one side of the molecule becomes positively charged, that's the hydrogen side, and one side of the molecule becomes negatively charged, and that's the oxygen side. And that's because the electrons seem to spend more time around the oxygen than they do around the hydrogen. Examples of these include water, some proteins, sugars, and ammonia. Now, a solution is a, uh, combining two substances, one being a solute and one being a solvent. Uh, a solute is a thing that's being dissolved, and a solvent is a thing that's doing the dissolving. So, will a mixture form a solution? If we mix two polar substances together, they form a solution, such as when we mix salt and water. The salt dissolves into the water, the salt is a solute, the water is a solvent. When we mix two nonpolar substances together, we also get a solution in which one mixes completely in the other. But when we combine opposite, one polar and one nonpolar, it is a mixture. The solution does not form, such as oil and water, and we know that they form two separate layers because they do not mix. Try it at home to see exactly how this works. Here's an example of how water, being such a great solvent, dissolves sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is an ionic compound, not covalent, and as a result, the sodium has a positive charge on its ions and the chlorine has a negative charge. The water is attracted to both of these ions in different ways. The water molecules surround the sodium atom with the negative ends of the oxygen, and the water surrounds the chlorine atoms, the positive ends of the hydrogens, and moving those apart is how it dissolves. We know that when we mix water and carbon dioxide, that there's some dissolving of the, water, oxygen, the carbon dioxide into the um, water, such as in soda pops, but most of it stays in solution. It doesn't mix, and that's because carbon dioxide is nonpolar and water is polar. So the fizz is an example of that. James bonds? No, hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds are very weak attractions that form between polar molecules. The positive side or end is attracted to the negative side or end of other molecules. These hydrogen bonds or hydrogen attractions are super short term. They exist for only a few trillionths of a second. They are constantly breaking and reforming. Here's an example. It shows these, dotted, these dots between each of these water molecules. The dots represent the hydrogen bonds that form between um, between the positive end of one water molecule and the negative end of another water molecule. Here's another example of hydrogen bonds, and the hydrogen bonds are forming between the hydrogen, which is positively charged, and the oxygen, which is negatively charged, on these two nitrogen base pairs found in DNA. Here's another example where the hydrogen bond is formed between hydrogen and nitrogen. Notice the hydrogen is positively charged, the nitrogen is negatively charged. We'll talk more about that when we get to the DNA unit. 
Water has some very unique features because of it's a polar molecule. For one, it's cohesive. It has cohesion, which means that water is attracted to other water molecules. Uh, it also is adhesive. It, water sticks to other molecules or other substances besides water. So cohesion, water sticking to water. Adhesion, water sticking to other things. Remember, some scotch, some, um, scotch tapes are called adhesives because they stick to other things. Surface tension occurs because of cohesive forces. Because water is attracted to other water molecules, it arranges itself to form these very weak hydrogen bonds that are constantly breaking and reforming. The surface of water tends to form a plastic sheet. And it can be very hard. If you've ever skied and fallen, you know how hard it can be. Or a belly flop. Water, being a very soft substance, is really, really very hard because of this surface tension due to cohesive forces. Here's some examples, and all of these yellow highlights are hydrogen bonds forming between hundreds of water molecules, and it forms this organized lattice system. And lastly, there's some additional characteristics of water you could read about. Please read the color plane information number 12, titled Unusual Properties of Water, and then complete the pyramid notes. They're titled, What are the Important Properties of Water?